So I'm super excited to bring you all the video on a game that I played quite a fair amount of when it first launched into early access back in 2022, 60.9 hours to be exact. And this game is of course none other than the blood-sucking, castle-building, vampire survival action RPG, V Rising. This video is sponsored by Stunlock Studios, but my only obligation here is to tell you about its official 1.0 release, which is on May 8th for PC. I'll leave a Steam link down below. It's also planned to release later this year for PS5. And also Castlevania fans, 1.0 brings with it some cool Castlevania themed cosmetics, and there's also an event in game where you can actually fight Simon Belmont. The rest of the video is up to me, and I supported this game back then, and I will continue to do so now. So let's jump in and let me tell you why you should definitely Check this out if you haven't checked it out yet, or maybe if you played back when Early Access launched, this is probably a great time to come back. If you've been living in the woods and you haven't heard of this game, well, first of all, it's about vampires, but you're not hunting vampires, you are the vampire, and you're going to be hunting humans as the humans overthrew your kind centuries ago, forcing you to be hidden away in the darkness, basically tortured by thirst. Until now. <laughs> That sound like a vampire? Revenge on the humans is always a good time, but actually you can hunt other vampires too if you play on a PvP server. But don't worry, y'all, I know a lot of you guys don't like PvP on my channel. You can absolutely play this game solo on your own server with nobody else playing with you. You can play on a PvE server where all the vampires are goody two-shoes and everybody gets along and y'all love each other. I love you. I won't bite. And if you choose to play online, you can actually join a server that's people that are solo or duos or even teams of squads. Basically, what I'm trying to say, y'all, is in V-Rising, there's a game mode for you. First and foremost, how's the gameplay in this game? Well, you can see it has a bit of an isometric look to it, but you can kind of zoom in a little bit here. You're probably going to want to keep it zoomed out, though, so you can see what's going on. Everything is really, really solid in this game. Very responsive. Everything is smooth. It was even like this when it launched into early access several years ago. I'm going to go ahead and dismount from my horse right here. We're just going to attack these uh, militia men right here. I'm going to start off with a little bit of a corrupted skull attack, which should spawn a skeleton, and I'm going to drop my little ice nova. Nice. Everything is just very responsive. Everything feels really, really good. You have the ability to dodge out of the way from enemies. So you can take on opponents in this game that are much higher level than you if you have the skill to do so. Or you can just kind of level up in the game and make sure you take it slow and only fight opponents that you kind of match their gear level for. And speaking of gear level, this is actually how you level in this game. So if we take a look at my vampire right here, I'm currently gear level 30. And if I take off my Grim Ranger vest right here, that drops me down to level 26. You don't actually level on your own. The way that you level in this game is you build up your base, you build up your crafting station, such as the workbench. You go to your workbench, and once you unlock the recipes, you start crafting better armor, and then you put that armor on, which will raise your gear level, allowing you to fight much tougher opponents. This game does have spells of which you unlock by killing really tough bosses and harvesting V-blood from them. You can have two active spells at a time plus an ultimate. You can do some pretty cool builds in this game, and there's actually six different schools of magic that you can pull spells from. You can even find special stones to slot onto a spell to add extra effects and bonuses. Also note that there's free respects if you build an altar of recollection. As far as weapons go, it's similar to gear in that over time you're going to be upgrading, of course. I'm currently on the copper quality of weapons, and I have a sword, I have an axe, I have a mace, I have a crossbow, and I also have a spear. Now, certain opponents in this game are more vulnerable to certain types of weapons, and also when you're out farming for materials and you're gathering materials, if you attack the tree with a spear, it will yield some wood, but you're better off using the axe, which is going to yield even more wood. Now the sun is rising, which gives me a really good opportunity to show opportunity, opportunity, opportunity to show you guys how cool this game actually is. So step into the sunlight, and you start taking some severe damage over time from the rays of the sun. Then all you gotta do is step into the smallest shadow, even behind this stone right here. And now I'm in the shade. Do note though that the shadows do shift as the day goes on. So you do have to be careful. You can't just go AFK when you're standing in one shadow because you're gonna come back and you're definitely gonna be dead. All of the mechanics in this game are really solidly implemented and many of them are also above and beyond what you would expect. So what should you do during the day if you don't wanna dodge the rays of the sun constantly? Well, one of the greatest strategies is to spend daytime inside your castle that hopefully has a roof. 
and build up your castle, work on all of your crafting, organize all of your chests and things of that nature. And then when nighttime hits, head out onto the map and go kill the bosses. And maybe if you're on PVP, take on other players or do all of your farming. Now my castle right now is not that great because I'm still fairly early on on this run, but my previous castles during early access, which were unfortunately wiped, they were pretty cool, and there's this one castle, I have some old footage pop up of an old, old stream at the start of Early Access. And as you can tell, I was on a PvP server, and I was really focused on base defense, and I added like five layers of walls and all of these confusing doors that a player would have to get through before they were able to reach my castle. It was super fun. Now, building your castle in this game is super fun, and it's come a long way since the launch of Early Access. There's more furniture and more customization options. But before you build a castle, you do have to place down your castle heart right here, and you do have to supply this castle heart with blood essence. This basically allows you to have the land surrounding your castle heart and it powers up your castle. You have to have it in order to build. If we go into the build menu, you can see that under castle, I can build foundation, I can build walls, stairs, wallpapers, windows. For production, we have dominant storage, crafting stations, refinement, research, growing pots, or growing plots, excuse me. We have a garden section, a decoration section where you have different types of furniture. And as you progress, you unlock a lot more recipes. Like I said, I'm still fairly early on right here. Then you have a whole lighting section here. All these lights in my castle right here were hand placed. And like with everything else in this game, everything's really well implemented. Everything's really smooth. And I can also just kind of stand in one area and build super far away from my character, which is also nice. Yeah, I can build in the room over here to the right, or I can build in front of me. Everything just works. Let's talk about another cool mechanic in this game, blood. So your vampire needs blood to survive, of course, and you can obtain blood by feeding on various creatures or humans, or you can even just pop a rat. Yeah, you can produce your own rats by crafting a vermin nest. Your blood pool is right here in the bottom center of the screen, and if that runs out, you start to lose HP, and you can also heal yourself from this blood pool. Like many aspects of this game, this mechanic is deeper than it initially appears, as when you feed on creatures, you actually obtain their particular type of blood. Feed on a Woodlands creature and get boosts to movement speed and sun resistance. Drink the blood of a human rogue and get boosts to critical hit chance. Drink the blood of a worker and gain benefits that will help you farm resources more efficiently. Different creatures also have different quality of blood, and the ones with higher percentages will get you better and more benefits. While we're on the topic of blood, certain boss-like opponents in this game carry V-Blood. And tracking and then killing these tough opponents not only yields new recipes and other rewards, but harvesting V-Blood also allows you to learn new spells. There's a lot of really cool bosses in this game, and some of them can actually be quite challenging. And the last major topic that I wanted to touch on is, of course, gathering and also crafting, both of which play a pretty big role in this game. I do want to mention that the ambience in this game and the soundtrack is phenomenal, which makes it all the more enjoyable to go out and try to gather materials and also craft as well. So when you're out and about in the world, depending on what area you're in, different areas will contain different types of resources. I'm currently in the Dunley Farmlands area. The map is actually really, really big. I'm just kind of running around looking for gems and also special ore deposits and maybe even some certain types of plants that may be in this area that I can't really find in the forested area to the south. So as I'm running around here, you can see this right here, I believe is a copper ore deposit. It has a slightly different color. This is a regular stone, but then this stone right here actually has some gems on it. So I would pull out my mace to get the best yield. And I just start hacking away on this particular stone right here. And it will yield some gems at the end, as well as some stone as I'm farming it. And as you can see, if you want to be efficient, you can actually hit two different materials at the same time or two different resources at the same time. Of course, it's better to use your ax when you're farming a tree, but in this situation, we're just going to go right in the middle of both of these and, you know, makes it a little bit more efficient and quick to gather more things. But once this rock explodes right here and it's taking a while, holy cow, there you go. You can see I got some gem dust. We got some sapphires and I also got a bunch of stone out of that as well. And of course, you're going to be farming trees and then certain plants that may only come out at night or in the daytime. There's a lot of really cool resources to farm in this game. It looks like we have a sulfur ore deposit right here. And I actually need some sulfur, so I'm going to grab that. But I am going to stand in the middle of both of these and try to farm some stone at the same time. Once you've gathered enough or perhaps your inventory is full, I have this ent, this tree ent coming at me right now, but I'm not quite that level. So I'm trying to avoid this guy, but he does like to hang out outside of my base. So once you feel like you're full or you just got some valuable items that you don't want to risk, you know, dropping when you die, if you're playing on a PVP server, other players can pick that up. On PVE, you can simply go back and pick up your bags. That of course does take time. But once you feel like you're ready, head back to your base and then the real work starts in this game. 
So if we take a look at my inventory here, I do want to make some planks and I can make planks by depositing wood into my sawmills. And instead of just putting it into one, we're going to put a thousand into one and I'm going to put a thousand into the other. And therefore we're being more efficient and we're producing planks at a much higher rate than if you just had one sawmill. And then maybe I'll come over here to my stone grinders right here. And these ones actually produce stone bricks which can be used to ca uh, used to craft all sorts of different you know walls and flooring for your castle and all sorts of different structures these actually produce the stone bricks very very slow so i have three of these in my base right now once you get really good at the game and you have a bigger castle you might have like 10 of these going at one time but i'm going to come to each of my grinders here and deposit these and actually you know if you're waiting for things to finish you could actually start up all of the uh, stations or refining stations or crafting stations up in your base and then head out and go farm and then come back and mostly everything should be crafted by then or you could start up all this stuff before you log off and the world continues on when you log off you'll come back to a bunch of materials but there's a ton of different crafting stations and refinement stations that you can make in this game we have the workbench to increase armor we have my woodworking bench right here i have a tannery where i can create leather out of hide and all sorts of different materials we have the furnaces right here to put ore into if i put copper ore in i'll get copper ingots from there there's all sorts of different chests a lot of these chests were not actually in early access when the game first came out so there's been a lot of content that's been added over time since last time i played but i have a small material storage chest right here i have a gem storage chest to make it easier to store certain types of materials and yeah you can just get all of your stuff going and there's just so much to it i just i wish i had more to show you guys right now but like i said all the progress got wiped from early access so i had to start over but you there's just so many different crafting stations and you can make all these different rooms and levels and special areas to have everything and i remember i even had a library in my base before just filled with all sorts of books and then i put my research desk in the the library because it it fit so yeah in v rising you're surviving you're going out and you're doing certain quests to kill certain bosses you're crafting you're refining you're building up your castle some of you guys may focus on that over other aspects of the game enjoying relaxing enjoying the environment and also it's just extremely intense at times as well especially if you play on a pvp server where you're actually trying to break into other players bases and steal their castle heart so their castle will crumble and you get all their goods all their goodies and all their chests it can be quite frustrating but it also makes it quite intense very much a huge fan of this game it's a very high quality game and i'm so happy that stumlock reached out because i i kind of forgot about it for a little while because i played so much in early access and once they reached out i was like okay i'm gonna jump back in so i can relearn the game a little bit I was just playing. I played for like 10 hours yesterday and I almost forgot that I had to make a video and take notes and do things because I just lost track of time because I was having so much fun. So this game has a huge thumbs up for me. If you haven't played it yet, definitely go check it out. Definitely support this studio. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. There's a link down in the description so you can pick it up. Hopefully it releases later this year on PS5. That's currently the plan. But version 1.0, the official release is here for PC players. Appreciate you guys. Peace.